electric power is defined by the amounts of voltage and current, at least when dealing with direct currents. With AC power, it depends on the phase angle between the voltage and the current. When both are in phase, which means they are present at the same time and same space, then power can be calculated by multiplying the voltage and the current. But what about resonant voltage and current? Well, they are 90 degrees out of phase. Thus, they do not have real power in a single resonant system. But what if we used two resonant systems. One producing very high voltages, while the other resonant system produces very high currents, while both are tuned to the same resonant frequency. And what if one is phase shifted to bring the voltage and the currents of both systems in phase? Could these two resonant systems serve as the dual primary coils for a single output secondary coil, both inducing voltage and current simultaneously into the load? Let's do the experiment. In my previous video, I explained and showed the dynamic reactances of an electric resonant system, whereby the reactances become twice zero and infinite within a resonant cycle. Within this video, I will continue with the practical application of this new knowledge by creating an experiment wherein high voltages and high currents are created together with an inflow of free external energy, with the ultimate goal to create free electric power magnification. I give all the information needed as I am an open source researcher into free electric power for all. Hi, my name is Ivo. Let me first give you some background information for the experiment. Two currents. To be clear, electric energy can flow as two distinct currents and I define current as electric energy flow. One electric energy flow is the dielectric displacement current, which flows between the plates of a capacitor. The other energy flow is the magnetic current. In this experiment, I want to play with the phase angles of the displacement and magnetic currents to bring them in phase. For the experiment, I will use resonant systems that are capacitive coupled. These resonant systems need to be tuned to the same resonant frequency. One coil of these will produce high magnetic currents around the coil, while another coil produces very high voltages, which are responsible for creating high displacement currents in the capacitive coupling between these two coils. So to be clear, I will have two capacitive coupled coils of which one has a high voltage while the other has a high magnetic current and there's a strong displacement current in between those coils. The balance of the size of the coil and capacitor in a resonant circuit determines the amplitude of magnification of the current and voltage. If the coil is big and the capacitor is small, there will be a large voltage for example, in a Tesla coil, which has very small capacitance between its windings, and also it will have displacement currents. Because both the reactances of the capacitor and the coil are large, it will allow large voltages and displacement currents. So high reactances give high voltages, but the magnetic currents will be very low. In reverse, the coil can also be made with only a few turns with thick wire giving low inductance, while the capacitor is made very big by placing it parallel to the coil. Now, the reactances of both the capacitor and the coil when resonant are very low while being tuned to the same resonant frequency as the other high voltage, high reactant resonant system. This low reactance will allow high magnetic energy to flow together with low resonant voltages. So if you want high magnetic currents, you need a low reactance. This balance between the size of the coil and the capacitor is called the characteristic impedance, whereby at the same resonant frequency, the high voltages or high magnetic currents can be produced. 
uniting the two separated current flows. These two high and low reactance resin systems can be directly coupled. Nikola Tesla had a trick for this. He used an extra coil series connected to the Tesla coil. The Tesla coil had a high reactance, but the extra coil had only a few turns and thus low reactance. And this makes it possible to capacitive couple the extra coil to the high magnetic current coil. This has the benefit that the high reactance AC high voltage transformer can be kept away from the resonant system. The extra coil will have the same high voltages but has low reactance. So it can be coupled to the high magnetic coil which also has low reactance. And by doing this we create a capacitor and with those very high voltages we also have very high displacement currents. So we have a magnetic field that is mixed with the displacement current field, separate reactances. We will use this separation of reactances to be able to couple the two resonant coils which have the same resonant frequency. And the plan is to mix the two electric currents and bring them in phase. As is known from the last video about resonant reactants, is that when resonant and in phase these two currents are 180 degrees phase shifted, which means they are opposing. So if one of these two systems is 180 degrees phase shifted, these two currents will become in phase, giving them the same polarity, driving the two resonance systems. The high inductance AC high voltage coil with its high inductance and high reactance is kept away from the coil capacitor, can be used to drive both resonant systems. Since both ends of the high voltage AC coil will have a 180 degrees out of phase voltage shine. Nikola Tesla showed this in his Colorado Springs notes, whereby the secondary coil had an extra coil connected to both ends of the secondary, so two extra coils. But I will use one of those extra coils to create high magnetic currents by placing a parallel resonant capacitor over it. If we move both the extra coils close together, then the high voltage extra coil will create a very high displacement current as the coils now act as capacitor plates. But we don't only have a displacement current, we also have the magnetic current which is present between those two coils. External energy. This system is already very interesting. But by itself it will never produce more output than input. We need an external energy source. And to produce more output we will need something extra. To get more energy we need to create an unbalanced system which nature will balance by reacting to the unbalanced system. So I will present an unbalance in the form of a sudden voltage change on the magnetic current coil. If we now add a MOSFET to one side of the AC transformer, the body diode will rectify one half of the voltage and only leave the positive voltage intact. When the MOSFET is then activated at the highest voltage point, it will quickly discharge this high voltage. And this creates a very strong impulse. And this impulse will set the displacement field into a very strong motion due to the high dv dt that is created in the field between the two extra coils, which are the capacitor plates. In June 2023, I already showed I could extract free energy into a capacitor by creating a sudden voltage change in a coil capacitor that demanded an inflow of free displacement current. Now I will use this same trick to amplify the magnetic current. I will not only need a sudden voltage change, but I will also need a sudden change in displacement current to amplify the magnetic current. This creates a disbalance which nature will again provide the needed inflow of energy to balance the system. 
this inflow of free energy in the form of extreme displacement currents will amplify the currents to an even higher maximum. This sudden change in voltage in the high voltage coil capacitor creates an extreme displacement current which Nikola Tesla identified as radiant energy as it has similarities with radiation energy. This means we now have an electric energy pump which pumps external energy into the resonance system. I already show this principle in my video of the summer of 2023. Pure resistive load. Since this is a resonance system, I predict I will only be able to use pure resistive loads. Because any addition of capacitance or inductance into the system will detune the resonant frequency, bringing the energy flows out of phase with the result of loss in electric power. The higher the resistive load, the lower its resistance will be, allowing more current to flow. The experiment. Okay, this is the experimental setup. This PCB, this is all made by myself and designed and debugged. And this has a TL494 chip that generates a signal, which I can tune. And the outputs are going to a IR2110 chip, which drives these push-pull MOSFETs that drive this AC high voltage transformer. The outputs of these are going to the high voltage coil, which you can see here. And the other side goes to the high current coil, which is inside of the high voltage coil. The high voltage coil is wound in a special way. Each layer has two centimeters separation and it is wound back and then filled up until it's complete. This has an effect on the displacement current direction. So it can easier mix in with the magnetic field of the high current coil. Here you can see the buildup of all the layers. This was a very labor intensive piece of work to get this coil done. The output coil is wound in between the windings of the high current coil. I think the output coil should actually be on top of the high current coil. The PCB gets its own power from a separate power supply, 16.6 volts, drives the whole board. So that separate voltage supply and current supply here is only for driving the transformer so that I can regulate it. Because these two coils act as capacitor plates, they form a parallel capacitor to this transformer. This AC high voltage transformer, when it's open-ended, resonated at 68 kilocycles per second. But now, due to the capacitance of these two coils, which is in parallel, the frequency is tuned way down to 15.2 kilocycles per second. So the high current coil has a parallel capacitor to it, which is much larger because that high current coil has much less inductance. It can allow more magnetic currents. And the parallel capacitance for this is 5.66 microfarad, so fairly large. This is the Bilefila coil series connection, which can also be used, but it is just to connect the two windings of the high current coil. Then one side of that coil where the AC high voltage transformer is connected, the drain of this MOSFET is also connected. And this MOSFET can be tuned in its opening and closing. It acts as a very fast switch, switching up to 13 nanoseconds. And that is fast. This MOSFET has an internal diode, which will rectify the negative half of that high voltage signal, while the positive half is allowed to grow and then is discharged at its maximum. And this creates the very strong displacement currents inside of the coil capacitor, because at the same time that this uh, voltage is discharged, this high voltage coil is at its maximum voltage. So the capacitance is charged up and then one plate of the capacitor is fast changing in voltage and this demands an current. 
Now you can see here two leads that's orange and red. That's one and the same coil. That is the output coil that is wound in between the high current coil. This output coil is connected to a load, which is six halogen lamps of 20 watts, 12 volts in parallel. Now the probes. Yellow. The yellow trace of the scope is the high voltage and it is capacitive coupled. You can see that uh, I put a tape and my clamp is on the tape so I'm not probing directly so I can see much higher voltages because this high voltage probe is limited but I'm able to probe higher voltages that way. And here is a blue lead. This is probing the drain of the MOSFET. So here I can see the voltage on the high current coil. Then green we have the current probe. It's a Pintec PA655 and that current probe has an arrow pointing towards the coil. Then one more probe. This is the orange trace. This orange trace uh, measures the signal that goes into the gate. Let me one more time explain this circuit board and what its function is. The TL494 generates a square wave signal with a out of phase dual output. And these signals go into that gate driver IC to create the push pull signal on these two MOSFETs that drive the AC high voltage transformer. So that is all regular technology. Then from the clock signal of that TL494, which generates the, the signal, I'm going to a delay chip, an HCT123. And this is a delay chip that I can set the duty cycle and the delay on. And with this, I can put my discharge of the MOSFET at the right time in the phase where the voltages are maximum. From here on, there's a small buffer transistor uh, which I had a lot of trouble <laughs> tweaking, that goes into a second TL494, which is used to drive these two MOSFETs. These are not in push-pull configuration, but in what I call pull-pull. It's just switching the drain to neutral. So I can use either one of these MOSFETs and that will cause a phase shift and that's an easy solution. Furthermore, I have a buck converter here that steps the 16.6 volt down to around 3.6 volts to power this delay chip and this transistor to get the right voltage for the TL494. Right now, the load is connected to earth ground on this side and the high voltage coil is connected on this side by this wire, while the AC lower voltage, oh yeah, that's what I forgot, the parallel resonance will create a lower voltage on this side of the high voltage transformer. So I can get a little bit lower voltages here than I got here and that's good because I want really high voltages there and lower voltages here so that my MOSFET won't explode from high voltages. That's also why I probe it so I can keep an eye on it. I'll uh, disconnect that load for now by simply removing the lead and keeping that just open like so. That's all right. So the output coil is now open-ended and grounded on one side. And we'll take a look at how this behaves right now without the load. Let's turn the system on. So if we take a look at the oscilloscope, we've got four traces corresponding with the, the probes. The blue is the drain of the MOSFET. The green is the current. The yellow is the high voltage coil. And the orange is the PCB where the gate signal is visible. Now we're gonna turn the system on. You see now the square wave in orange of the PCB of the gate. So the MOSFET is already switching. Now I'm gonna power it up with a little bit of voltage to see what's gonna happen. And here we have some current and we have some voltage. Let me turn the current a little bit down and drive it up a little bit higher so we see what is happening. Okay, this looks good. This is 0.57 amps at 0.7 volts. So very low wattage, less than half a watt to produce this result. If you now take a look at the scope, what you can see is that the MOSFET turns on when 
the orange lead goes high. And that is at the negative voltage maximum in yellow of the high voltage coil. The voltage and the current are now in phase. Current in green and the voltage in yellow are the high voltage and the high current coil and they are in phase. In blue you can see the voltage of the drain. So that is the voltage present on the high voltage coil being produced by the AC transformer. The negative half is rectified by the body diode of the MOSFET and only the positive half is able to build up. Now we got a 50 volts per division so around 50 volts, 60 volts is being built up and then when it's maximum positive it is discharged very rapidly. The voltage in yellow appears to be 571 volts peak to peak but in reality the voltage is much higher because I am capacitive coupling the probe and therefore I do not read the exact voltages. So it will be higher, I don't exactly know how high. For me this voltage is relatively very low. I want to get it up into the thousands of volts. Now the current is a half amp per division. So the current coil is two amps peak to peak with only powering the high voltage coil and just using that MOSFET discharge. Now I'm gonna power up the load. Let me connect up that load. And here we have the voltage. I'm giving it a little bit more power than before. The power now is 1.02 amps at 1.2 volts. So still very low, just above a watt, just a little bit more than twice the power that I had without the load. If you now take a look at the oscilloscope, we can see that the blue voltage has increased to around 100 volts. So 100 volts is being discharged. And in yellow, we see the voltage is now climbed to 996 volts peak to peak, which is in reality a little bit higher because the probe is not directly connected. And in green, current has not only diminished, let me show you a little bit more amplification. So this is 100 milliamps per division. We've got now, let's say 300 milliamps peak to peak which is very, very small amount of current. But we see another thing. The voltage and the current are now not longer in phase. Current is around minus 90 degrees phase shifted. And this is actually interesting because now that current is in phase with the displacement current of the coil capacitor. So now the magnetic current and the displacement current are in phase. As you have seen, the voltages have been kept very low. This was because the AC high voltage transformer had high voltages on both ends. As a solution, I placed a 15 kilo ohm resistor in series with the AC transformer to neutral, parallel to the MOSFET switch. And this reduces the voltage enough to raise the high voltage on the high voltage coil while reducing the voltage on the high current coil where the drain of the MOSFET is connected to. So now I can increase the power and I can look at how the system behaves with these higher voltages that are now being switched. Now the capacity of the coil capacitor is really charged up by the high voltage and discharged by the MOSFET that now only has to switch a lower voltage. You might notice the voltage at the drain of the MOSFET has slightly phase shifted. With a pure resistance I wouldn't have expected this to happen, but probably this 15 kilo ohm resistor has a little bit capacitance and a little bit inductance that causes the phase shift. But it's not bad because the voltage is still high enough. I have decoupled the output coil, so it's only grounded on one side, the other side is open-ended. I'm probing the current again and I detached the drain of the MOSFET, so the MOSFET is not connected to the circuit. I only have a high voltage that I'm powering with the AC coil and I have a high current in this coil capacitor. And I have a high parallel resonance in the high current coil. So I can measure both. Let's give it some power and we'll see what happens. 
This is with 2.45 amps at 3.4 volts from the power supply. So we can see the blue voltage is directly probed on the high current coil. We have now 100 volts per division. So that would give us around 220 volts. While in yellow, the high voltage coil is producing 3.4 two kilovolts peak to peak. So now we have a proper voltage difference and that is good because this is able to be switched by the MOSFET. Because we now increased the power from the power supply, we now have 9.3 amps peak to peak inside that high current coil. So it actually starts working as it should. The current and voltage are in phase and the blue voltage is a little bit phase shifted and that is probably due to the resistance that I used. Okay, now I'm gonna connect the output coil and I'm gonna connect the drain of the MOSFET to that voltage so I can switch it to neutral and cause that high negative voltage to be switched while it is charged. And my best guess is that I would even need to go a lot higher in voltage before this really starts working. I have the load connected. One side is connected to earth ground. Okay, let's just turn the system on and see what we've got. Let's look at the scope. So there is the signal. The power is now 2.77 amps at 3.5 volt. If we take a look at the yellow voltage, we can now read 3.6 kilovolts peak to peak. And this is still capacitive probe. So the actual voltage will be much higher. In green we see the current which again due to the presence of the load has phase shifted to minus 90 degrees. The amps are 500 milliamps per division so we have only a few amps present in the system right now. I would need to push it up to much higher voltages. But more importantly, blue, the voltage on the drain of the MOSFET, which is the voltage of the high current coil, which acts as the capacitor plate. It is still out of phase with the yellow high voltage. Let's look at the values. We've got 100 volts to per divisions. So we have around a 100 volt that we are switching now, while the actual maximum is somewhere around 130 volts. Still, this is a very good result. So at that moment in time, when we switch, we have a negative 1800 volts and a positive 100 volts. Although that negative 1800 volts is much more negative. And then the voltage is suddenly changed. Now in the load, I can't see anything. The lamps are not glowing. So maybe this load is too big. I could put the current probe on one of the leads, but I don't expect much as the current in the high current coil also is very low. But let's do it anyway. Okay, this is the current in the output. It is very low. You can see the phase. It is as the high current coil. It has the same phase. And we've got a 200 milliamps per division right now. So I would say 600 milliamps peak to peak on the output coil. So it's not bringing us anywhere closer to having a real output at this moment in time. This needs further experimentation. And one thing I really need to do is get that output coil in between that high voltage and the high current coil. Because now it is embedded in the high current coil and that is not where it should be. That is how experiments go. The idea is solid, but the engineering takes time. Each time there's a new challenge to overcome, but the path is clear. Conclusion. The high resonant voltage and current can be made in phase when using two resonant systems. Tesla's extra coil can be used as a capacitor plate to couple the displacement currents without high inductive reactances. Unloaded, the system had current and voltage in phase, while loaded, the magnetic current shifted to negative 90 degrees, bringing it in phase with the displacement current of the coil capacitor. This experiment leaves a lot of room for modifications to get it working. 
For example, the output coil could be wound as a barrier between the two primary coils. Also, the discharge could be placed on the zero reactance point, where the current is maximum and the voltage is minimum. And maybe there is another better solution to keep the discharge voltage of the MOSFET safe at a low level. For example, instead of using a resistor, I could use a choke maybe. And lastly, the load could be changed in resistance to give better results. I feel the project has much potential to continue working on, so I will. If you have any idea of how to continue, please let me know in the comment section below this video. If you want to donate to my research, you can do so by using the PayPal link in my description or the QR code or the link here in the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching and see you next time.